Okay, today is a really interesting topic in my eyes because it's not an investigation or an expose or even a review, it's just a question. Are your mods really yours? To best explain what that even means, we have to define mods and detail what they are within the context of gaming. Mods in gaming are community-made alterations of a video game that can be downloaded, installed, and used by other community members. Some of the best actual content in the entire world is based on community mods. And to really put that in perspective, we have to look at a game like Skyrim. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is effectively a pillar of the entire gaming world, and has been for nearly 10 years. Not because its base version is some kind of lone-standing monolith in the world of technical innovation, but because community modding has taken this bare-bones framework and turned it into something fantastic. There are very few games in history that have managed to capture and maintain a concurrent player count north of 20,000 for almost 10 years. They certainly do exist, absolutely, but it's far from the norm. Skyrim was and is able to do this purely as a result of the modding scene, and the incredible depth that community-driven content is able to add to the title. Civil War mods entire new regions, new quests, items, and really anything you can think of. You can turn dragons into Thomas the Tank Engine or have clowns running around as the bandits, because truly, anything is possible. Obviously, the most popular mods center on atmospheric and lore-abiding updates, making the game HD, adding new textures or animations or skills or metric balancing, but the reality is PC game modding is a massive and important industry in the field, where some players effectively don't even play base game editions anymore because the mods can always make them better. So, on to the question at hand. This topic, by the way, was forwarded to me by an admin named Shino. Big thank you to them. Are your mods really yours? The immediate answer is probably yes. If you create custom code that modifies how a game runs and let other people use it to improve their own experience, it's still yours. Logically, I can understand that thought process, absolutely, but when you take it one or two steps further, it gets a lot more complicated. Enter Nexus Mods. Nexus Mods is probably one of the best known modding platforms in the world, where you can download and install gaming mods for well over a thousand games, I believe. The site serves, as per its own statistics, almost 30 million members, with nearly 5 billion downloads to date. That's a massive platform, and one that holds a great deal of sway over both modders and players alike. Well, in early July of 2021, Nexus Mods announced that they were implementing a new policy where modders could no longer delete their own files. Once uploaded, they could merely archive them, but never delete the code that they submitted to the site. And this created a rush, a fairly big rush, by certain well-known player contributors to delete all of their content from the platform before the deadline. That deadline being August 5th. Why would they do this? Well, to explain that, we have to look at a seemingly unrelated but very critical two-hour debacle that happened in Oakland, California during 2016. Now, keep in mind I'm not an expert on coding or technical languages. However, these events are pretty easy to summarize, and conceptually they outline exactly what Nexus Mods was probably thinking when they created this new policy. In Oakland, California, 2016, a man with a name I definitely cannot pronounce broke the internet with 11 lines of code. Why and how? because that code was used as a building block for hundreds, thousands, probably millions of additional programs and pieces of software, so that once deleted, those additional pieces of software started to fail as well. Put simply, all programs are built on other programs. It's a giant house of cards in a way, and when you take away one tiny little piece, the wrong piece, it can start a cascade failure that has far-reaching and very unpredictable effects. These simple 11 lines of code started to break a lot of things, and within two hours they were un-unpublished to protect the functionality of half the internet. That might be an exaggeration, yes, but it was definitely not a small issue. The reason they got deleted is because the author, the man with the name I definitely cannot pronounce, had decided that he had total agency over his own creation, and thus the unequivocal right to delete it. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but just for the sake of summary, that's kind of what happened. He did, he deleted it, and when he did that, it had side effects. Think of that particular example when looking at Nexus mods, and it starts to make a bit more sense. Mods are often built on other mods. To use one of the higher level gameplay impacting mods for Skyrim, as an example, you almost always need a series of smaller mods in place before it can run. As a specific example here, the Skyrim Flora mod, one of the most popular mods on the entire platform right now, and it has been for quite some time, requires well over a dozen smaller mods to function. The effect is extremely positive overall, but when building blocks for this mod start to get deleted, it can actually stop other mods built on top of it to stop functioning entirely. That's kind of where the new Nexus mod policy comes into play, because eliminating a modder's ability to delete their own creation protects against this kind of cascade failure that 11 lines of code can do to the entire internet, or one deleted texture pack can do to popular Skyrim overhauls. 
In this new system, archiving a mod does not actually delete anything, it just hides it from individual download. If it's in a collection, for example, bundled together to use with other mods as a link in the chain for different content, it can still be actively used and referenced. It all sounds like a pretty solid argument in favor of this new policy, right? But is it really? If modders can no longer delete what they upload, is it actually theirs? What if there is a security flaw in the mod? What if there is broken code? What if, for some other reason entirely, like privacy, a modder wishes to take the thing they created down, and there are a multitude of these reasons, potentially? They can't do it. I've also seen and heard a slippery slope argument being made about general ownership, but regardless of how you look at it, this absolutely does equate to a marginal loss of agency for the modders. And that is where the real question comes into play. When does your code stop being your code and become community code? Does it ever happen? Should it ever happen? It's a question I can't even begin to find an answer for because it's a question that doesn't actually have a definitive answer. Let's say you make a small piece of code that changes how the loot system in Skyrim works. It's popular, it's clean, it's beneficial, and overall it's amazing. Well, other mods might start to use that as a building block to maybe change how certain items look on the ground, add completely new item sets into the drop pool, augment what certain enemies wear, visually speaking, and then actually drop on death, whatever it is, etc. What if your little tweak to the loot system, which started out really small, gets incorporated into 500 other mods, and those mods have incredible depth, scale, and scope. What then? If you delete this little bit of code, you might actually break most or some of those other mods. They might stop functioning for thousands of players. If you execute what would seem to be obvious and deserved agency over your own creation, you negatively affect a huge number of people. And obviously Skyrim isn't the most pressing or impactful example here, but the fundamental premise is fairly consistent. When does your code stop being your code? Because to continue treating it as yours and deleting it, among other things, would cause so much relative harm, it can't be allowed. To make this clear, I don't actually have an answer. To some, that time just never comes. To others, it's a variable question that changes based on context and example, but for the most radical, your creations aren't your creations because everyone deserves to have what you made. It is for the good of the people and should be shared equally by all with no individual property ownership or agency. We don't take that group seriously on this channel though. The funny thing is, once this policy was announced, the very thing is aimed at preventing started to happen. Modders, at least some, began to delete their creations and the cascade effect showed up in real time. For reference, here's a list of some known Fallout 4 mods that got deleted. I don't think it's all of them even, but it's some of them. It's not a small number. It wasn't nearly as big as the NPM deletion from 2016, those 11 lines of code that almost broke the internet, and it wasn't nearly as impactful, of course, but it happened and players woke up to their games returning error codes and failing to start. The debate over this new Nexus mod policy update was, and is, rather fierce. The survey they put out internally, which returned nearly 2,000 results, I believe, showcased that only about 8-9% to of modders viewed the general idea in a negative light. Though, obviously you have to take this with a grain of salt because it wasn't actually done after they had a full comprehensive look at what the policy would be, right? So it was kind of like a blind survey almost, but... I think it's still kind of fairly indicative of where we're at. But when refining the question in their own survey, over 15% said they had no interest at all in creating mod packs that other users could use, and nearly 20% said that they had, in general, a negative impression of the term mod pack. While the majority of users were neutral to positive on the issue and the update, it created a schism in the community because the basic premise of modding has, up till this point, generally speaking, been predicated on open source freedom and mutually beneficial sharing of information. Games that allow modding by opening their files to the community, widely speaking, they thrive. Games that close themselves off oftentimes languish and die because a vibrant modding community can often surpass the actual development team itself behind the project, both in quantity and quality. That sense of openness most likely feels violated for some in the Nexus Mods community, even if the basic premise is quite easily understood. If you look at it from an absolute numbers perspective, this change will certainly help and protect more people, absolute numbers again, more people than it harms. But balancing that kind of goal with the knowledge that you absolutely are infringing upon someone's agency over the product or code they themselves crafted, it's not an easy question, and it doesn't have a one-size-fits-all answer. Nexus Mods hasn't destroyed modding or stolen the rights to the community's work, but what they have done is taken a single step down a path where the benefit of the many outweighs the agency and ownership of the few. It's been an unspoken rule for a long time that sharing is a general cornerstone of modding and open source community creation for that matter, which isn't always respected, but for the most part, it is, and I can completely understand why a certain set of modders will be, and have been, greatly frustrated by this change. 
Inversely, I can understand why many in the community will feel that this merely provides added security and dependability to the platform for future mods. What you make and what you reference is now fairly immutably stable. It won't be deleted out from under you, thereby wreaking havoc on your own creation that happened to reference or incorporate previous code. Either way, someone will be unhappy. This is a, a no-win situation, if you will. And I thought it was an extremely interesting question to pose. At what point is your code no longer your code to do with as you please, but the community's code? A really strange atmosphere has emerged where some modders who deleted their creations are being viewed or, or called entitled because they took down their own work by people who feel entitled to download their work. It's a question with no real answer because there's always something you can point to and dispute, and you would probably be right to do so. But anyways, that's it. I'd be curious about the community's thoughts in the comment section down below because a lot of you probably have a lot more expertise on this topic than I do. So again, if you want, put a comment down below and discuss. If you want to support, there are other links there as well. Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative. Locals, $5 a month for completely ad-free versions of all the content. Another gaming YouTuber to check out. Merch, social media, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.